James, thanks for joining us out here in Tokyo. Three weeks into the role, how have you found it so far? Well, first of all, it's, it's, it's great to be here in Japan and the first three weeks have, have been incredible. I think before you join a club like Newcastle, you, you hear about the magnitude of the club, the size of the club, the passionate fan base. And then only when you really join, you, you realize how massive that is. You really, really understand what this club means to the community and, and, and to the city and obviously the responsibility that you, you have to take with that. And then from internally, um, the, the, the staff and the players have been fantastic. It's an amazingly well-knit group of staff and players that are, are super humble but super passionate about what, what, the, uh, what the season entails and what we want to achieve and, and uh, a real collective kind of uh, togetherness that, that we hope will have a great season. So after three weeks, uh, the feeling is great. Um, lots to do, lots of things to, to get excited about for the future, but um, so glad to have, have had the opportunity to, to join the club. And the role is performance director. Tell us exactly what that entails. Yeah, so performance director is kind of a new role in football. It's, it's growing every year. You're seeing more and more performance directors in clubs. Um, so for Newcastle, that means that I have responsibility over the men's programme, the women's programme and the academy. And I oversee uh, the, the kind of major disciplines of performance and sports science, medical, nutrition and psychology. Uh, all of those areas have incredible expertise, knowledge, skills. And the, the role of the performance director is kind of to be the conductor of the orchestra, of trying to get all those to blend together to provide the, the, the best support for the players, for the, the staff, to, to optimise everything from recovery, from physical development, from medical care, um, and bring that together to obviously to impact their ability to perform on the weekend, to outrun everyone, to perform 90 plus minutes week in, week out. And obviously the most important step for me is the availability of the players. The, the players being available for the coach to choose from, um, that gives us the best opportunity to hit our goals and, and achieve the, the best we can. Last season, a lot of minutes were lost. What are the steps to, to trying to fix that? Yeah, look, there, in football, the trend is there, there is more injuries. Um, and obviously now my care and attention is to make sure we maximise every player's availability for Newcastle. Injuries, by definition, are multifaceted. You can get soft tissue injuries, you can get contact injuries, you can get injuries in games, in training. My job is to make sure that every stone is, is turned in regards to um, optimising the recovery of the players, making sure that we're developing them, making sure we're managing their load appropriately. Um, players that are coming back from injury, that it's a progressive integration and they're ready to perform at 90 minutes. And that's where that amazing collaboration with, with Eddie and his staff uh, happens around trying to you know, spin all those different plates. We've got a team, but we've also got 20 plus individuals in that team that are different ages, different kind of injury histories, different kind of progressions on their development. And we, we need to make sure we get that blend really, really well. So um, the main part of me is to review what happened last year, to, to learn from that, and, and obviously to take my experiences and, and my knowledge to bring all these departments together to make sure that we're providing the players the, the best possible service and, and obviously making sure that Eddie and his staff are getting the players as much as he can on, on the field. So in terms of that collaboration that you mentioned, how do you see your staff, the, the medical, the performance staff, dovetailing with Eddie's staff and the, the coaching staff? Yeah, look, the, the first three weeks have been brilliant. I meet Eddie every day. We sit at breakfast every morning. We're chatting about things. Yesterday, me and uh, some of my staff were presenting with his staff and discussing the schedule for up to the international break past the Tottenham game. So we're, we're getting into that macro and micro detail every minute. Obviously, it's a new relationship and we're trying to obviously um, expedite that as much as possible to, to learn how we, we both work. But my, my job and my staff's job is to provide healthy, fit players to Eddie to do the amazing things that he does on the field. Like just watching his sessions, there's never a, a dull moment. It's, it's constant and relentless coaching, uh, support, development of the players. And from a performance department perspective, that's the perfect marriage because you want to see the physicality in the sessions. You want to see how we want to play on the weekend being replicated in training. And, and you really do see that with him and his staff. And, from a, from a kind of integration perspective, my job is to provide credible and really detailed information to make sure that he can make the decisions he needs to do as a head coach in regards to the training, in regards to the minutes of the players. Um, and that's my job, is to provide insights, to provide detail, clarity, and deliberate feedback every day to make sure that ultimately all the players stay fit and healthy. And, and we all have the same goal, is to win. It's to win, win, win. So there's, no, there's never any kind of conflict in that because the single North Star goal 
is that we want to win. You've got a very impressive CV, a very varied CV. Can you talk us through it? Yeah, look, I've, I, I, I think I've been very lucky in my career. I've, I've been able to work in kind of the three disciplines. Of, I've worked in clubs, I've worked in the federations, and I've worked in uh, the league office in the Premier League. So uh, in that kind of experience, I've tried to garner as much kind of personal and professional experience as I can. I've worked abroad, I've worked in different countries, I've worked in America, into France, and, and obviously in the UK. I think what you learn is there's more than one way to do things. I think it humbles you in that respect, that you there isn't one way, and that one way is the only way. You learn from the incredible kind of coaching staff that you get to, to meet on that journey the different cultures, the different nationality of players. There's all that nuance that comes into the development and the delivery of, of how you do things. Um, but under that, there's some core principles that you try to apply and you try to apply within the context of the, the DNA and the club that, that you enter. And then you try to apply that the, the best you can. I think, yeah, from my experiences, my last kind of two roles have been in a similar role to, to I have here in Newcastle as a performance director overseeing large programmes. And I think the, the skill set that I bring is obviously trying to, to take these amazingly skilled individual departments of medical performance, nutrition and psychology and get them all singing on the same hymn seat and, and giving the most credible and detailed information we can to, to influence training, influence player availability and, and performance. A part of your previous remit was, was involved with the US women's team, which a lot of people maybe don't realise. The women's team here, Newcastle United women, they're, they're on the back of successive promotions you've created a bit of a legacy at the US, how would you sort of see it working here? Well yeah, the, the women's programme here, it's an incredible journey to, to, to go from where they were, double back-to-back -back promotions and obviously we're going for the three-peat this year and, and trying to do that again. Um, yeah, look, a big part of my deliberate move to the US was to learn more about the women's game and, and what better opportunity to do that with the best women's team on the planet, which was the, the US women's national team. I also oversaw the men's program, but the, the nuance of being able to help support the women's program, learn the details there was amazing and that culminated in, in winning a, a World Cup with them when I was there in France. Um, it's it's you still apply similar principles in, in regards to physical development medical care support but there are some again nuances in the women's program that you have to apply slightly differently um, myself and paul mitchell were over with 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 sue and becky uh, last week and we had a big meeting discussing the plan discussing the roster discussing all the details around that and it's super exciting program there's so much opportunity in women's football in general in the UK but more specifically the journey that's happened at Newcastle is one that we're already proud of already and but we're more excited for the future and even the, the you know the back-to-back -back games in the Sellers Cup playing AC Milan what an amazing opportunity to get in front of the St James's Park crowd and, and really put on a showcase of, of what that women's team can do. Um, they're in Cheshire at the moment on their pre-season and we are in contact with Becky every day and, and talking to her about how things are going and again I hope um, that just some of my kind of experiences in this kind of area will help again support her like I do with Eddie in maximizing that player kind of availability development so the way I see it I apply the same care and attention to, to both of those and of, of course of, of the academy as well. In terms of the academy then your, your previous experience with the Premier League how does that help potentially to, to help you with that work there? Yeah, so one of my roles at the Premier League was Head of Elite Performance, so that was encompassing all kind of 20 Premier League clubs and all Cat 1 academies. Um, I have a huge passion for academy football, having worked at Southampton for eight years and, and watching that pipeline of talent come from under 13s all the way to making international debuts. So I have a natural passion for that and I think also the local fan base here in Newcastle has that same passion of wanting to see their own kind of homegrown players come through the academy. So in regards to the Premier League job, I was there to support all 20 clubs. Um, we, we developed standards, uh, medical and injury surveillance so that everyone had the ability to, to support their players as best as they can. It's a little bit of a different role because you're supporting the system rather than an individual club. But again, it's about trying to just drive standards and, and that's what my job is now as well. Drive standards, drive process, drive protocols to really uplift the, the, the whole club or in that case, the whole community. And, and we had some really good successes and, and, and really good connections with, with, the, with, with the clubs on that. And you've worked extensively with Paul Mitchell, the, the new sporting director as well. What's your relationship like with him and how can that benefit the club, do you feel? Yeah, look, Paul's a, a, a great, great professional with amazing experience, but like it, it it's his day-to-day -day drive and passion for performance and, and again, leaving no kind of stone unturned in regards to making sure that every part of a club is optimised. And 
I thrive under that pressure. And, and although I've worked with him a lot, the pressure I get every day is significant around ex expectations of what we're trying to achieve. So I know he has uh, super experience, obviously, in, in driving standards. And a part of my role is to make sure the medical performance standards of, of, of the club are at the highest level. And, and he will be pushing that as well as every other function within the sporting side to, to be better. And as we sit here now, training's going on behind us. Could you tell us a little bit about what a pre-season looks like now under under you, under the performance staff? Yeah, well, look, when you become a mega club like Newcastle are, you, you end up having to do more pre-seasons away from home. When you have the fan base that you have in places like Japan, you, you, you need to kind of engage with those communities. So it's great to have been in Germany at the Adidas headquarters, which was a phenomenal environment with amazing services and amazing environment to, to develop the players. And then here in Japan, it comes with its challenges, the distance, the heat and the environment, but also with a, an immense amount of opportunity uh, to obviously from a fan base, but also from a kind of adaptation in the heat. Um, generally, pre-season has changed over the years like you are now spinning, uh, spinning so many plates with, with the players we had a, a core group that came back early we have some players that kind of came back after the Euros at different time and obviously now we're, we're kind of reintegrating Fabi and Bruno and, and players like that back into the group at a later point and next week Anthony and Kieran come back to the group so you're trying to get that that nice kind of blend of, of getting everyone on the same page but also knowing that everyone is coming back at different stages. Pre-season in general is, is about getting ready for what is the hardest competition in world football, which is Premier League football. So you have to up the levels of physicality. You have to understand that the players have taken a bit of time off to recover and rest, which is deserved. But now we have to start to build up that intensity every day, the physicality, the game exposure, the strength and conditioning in the gym, just to get them ready for what is always a relentless season. Uh, the, the beauty and the challenge of the Premier League is there's no easy game. You have to be on peak performance every seven days and in some cases every three or four days. And that is an immensely complex challenge and one that is solved by amazing staff all pulling together and all collaborating, communicating and working together to optimise every moment you have with the players, um, both on a collective and in an individual way.